Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's another Sabbath day. It is the Lord's day. It is a blessed day. It's a sanctified day. It's a hallowed day. And God's desire is to have an especial blessing for us on this day. Now, we are continuing with our theme, Bible Characters in Lessons, and we have been covering all week the life of Moses. Our subject for today is the death and resurrection of Moses. The death and the resurrection of Moses. You know, folk, Moses learned a lesson that we also a must learn. Moses learned experientially. He learned in a living way. He, he learned by experience that God's mercy and God's justice are equal. That's important. Moses learned experientially that God's grace and condemnation are equal. You see, here's what we want to believe. We want to believe that uh, uh, God's mercy and grace far outweighs God's justice and condemnation. And therefore, that pushes us to the ultimate conclusion that we can get away with murder. God is basically passive. He, oh, he just loves so much. Oh, he's just so full of grace and mercy, you know. He'll, he'll just overlook the wrong. That's not right. That's, that's not correct when God revealed his character to Moses. He imparted into that uh, re revelation that he will by no means excuse the guilty. <clears throat> Moses personally learned and experienced. And the, the life of Moses in the hands of God forever proved that God's character of grace and mercy, God's character of law and justice, God's character of vengeance and love, wrath and pardon are all perfectly balanced and harmonious. God can be merciful and just at the same time, God can be gracious and extend grace and punish and condemn. At the same time, God can do that. He can do that. They're equal. All his characteristics are equal. They're balanced in him. You see, oftentimes, those who God punishes, he purifies. Those uh, who are afflicted by God, he heals. Those whom God rejects, he also draws and accepts oftentimes. Those who God chastens, he also comforts. Those whom God puts to death, he also resurrects to eternal life. <laughs> That's our God. Just, just ask Moses about it when you, when you enter heaven. Look, let's pray. Our Father and our God, we... We thank you for yet another day, the Sabbath day, a day of rest. Lord, come over our spirits, calm them, give them poise, strengthen us all to receive a blessing, a special blessing from the hand of the creator this day. Bless us and use us all this morning in a mighty way. Refresh us as we go to a place of worship to be all the more refreshed and to refresh others. Bless us, teach us, enlighten us this day. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we are looking at the subject, the death and resurrection of Moses. Let's Let's, let's consider what the end 
of Moses was. Let's look at Numbers chapter 20, and we're going to read verses 1 through 5. And the Bible says, Heavenly Father, please anoint me this morning in the name of Jesus. I need your strength. You know everything about me, your daughter, and your son too. Please, Lord, anoint me this morning. Fill me with Holy Ghost power. Lord, I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you for this grand opportunity to commune with you in your word and with my brethren. In Jesus' name, please forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> then came the children of Israel even the whole congregation into the desert of Zin in the first month. And the people abode in Kadesh. And Miriam died there and was buried there. And there was no water for the congregation. And they gathered themselves together for the congregation. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people chided with Moses and spake saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord? And why have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness, that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have ye made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us in unto this evil place? It is no place of seed or of figs, or of vines, or of pom pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. Oftentimes, human sinful nature always wants to see and focus on the burnt side of the toast. They always want to see the glass as half empty, not, not half full. Here Miriam dies. Why? Uh, they're expecting that... Uh, before long, they're going to enter the promised land. And here she dies in the wilderness. What's, what's going on? Why, why couldn't the Lord preserve her? And then they again, this is not the first time, they again come to a place where there's no water for the congregation. And uh, that's sufficient, especially the thing of no water. They gather themselves against Moses and against Aaron. That, that's who they're going to put the blame on. That's who they could see. That's whom God had appointed as leaders for the people. And so they're going to get them. And the people chided with Moses. And here's what they said. Would that God had killed us. We, we wish we had died with our brethren before the Lord. You know, they had rebelled uh, a, bit, a bit before that. And God put many of them to death. God did it. And here... They're saying, we wish we had died with them when they rebelled against the Lord and against Moses. God killed them, and we wish we had died them. That's pretty bold talk, ignorant talk, foolish talk. <clears throat> but they're saying this because they, they have no water. And then they go on to say to Moses, why have you brought us out of Egypt? Why have you brought up this whole congregation of the Lord? They're claiming to be the congregation of the Lord. But they're not trusting the Lord. They're angry about the way the Lord is doing stuff. They were always predisposed to do that. And they're saying to Moses, why have you brought up the people of God, the children of God, the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness? And you brought us out here to die. Us, our children, our cattle, everything we got. You, that's what you've done. You brought the people out of God out here to kill us. And then he said, and then the people say, wherefore have ye made us to come up out of Egypt into this evil place? Egypt, they say, would have been a better place than freedom from Egypt. And that's the way they feel. You know, the devil come over us and we put all kind of stuff in our minds and then all in an instant, we are just bent out of shape. Here's what they saying to Moses. Why have you brought us out of slavery, out of bondage, out of oppression, into this evil place? Mm. Us being free doesn't mean anything. We don't have any water. 
Furthermore, this is not a this is a desert. This is no place of seed, a place of seed and figs and vines and pomegranates. Plus, there's no water to drink. Why have you done it? What kind of rebellion is this? Now, in response to all of that, God gives instructions to Moses and Aaron. And the Bible says in Numbers chapter 20 and verses 6 through 8, God is merciful. Let's, let's see what he says. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. And it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so that so thou shalt give the congregation and their beast drink. All right. Uh, Aaron and Moses did the right thing. <clears throat> they didn't take up arms with the people, if you know what I mean, arguing word for word, laying them out, getting them straight, even though the people were dead wrong twice over, ten times over. They didn't enter into some great debate and argument and controversy with them. Mm -hmm. What they did was went to the tabernacle, fell on their faces before the Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take everything to God in prayer. Oh, what needs this pain we bear? All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. That's what they did. A good example for us. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. That's both of them. But he spake unto Moses saying, listen, this is what I want you to do. Speak after you grab, gather, gather the people together. Speak unto the rock mm -hmm. before their eyes and it shall bring forth his water. The rock shall mm. bring forth his water. What do you mean his water? Mm. Uh, the rock was Jesus. Yes. It wasn't Moses. It was Jesus. Mm. But speak to the rock. Speak to the rock. All right. That, that's what God told Moses. Speak to the rock. What happened? Mm -mm -mm. What happened? Uh, Numbers chapter 20 and verses 9 through 12. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord, as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels, hmm. must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses <clears throat> lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beast also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Even though Moses made a gross mistake here, yes, a gross misstep, mercy, God was still merciful in that he Brought gave the water, the water Hallelujah. to the people. Thank you, Jesus. Oftentimes leaders uh, are in the wrong, but God oftentimes still Thank blesses you, the people. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm -mm. What happened was Moses took the rod, just like God commanded. Yeah. Took it from the sanctuary, took it out, called the people together. Now he was angry. Yes. Vexed. Annoyed. Mm. And so and set up speaking to them as speaking. normal. Yeah. He, he, he referred to them as ye rebels. rebels. Well, well, the fact was they were rebels. Mm, 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 mm. But that attitude, yes, uh, that yes. spirit, us, Jesus. that anger, mm. you know what I mean. He said that out of, out of annoyance, oh, out of being agitated. Mm. Uh, that was the wrong spirit to yes. exhibit. Mercy. God help us all. Help us, Jesus. And then he goes on and takes the credit. He says, must we, mm. talking about him and Aaron, must we. Aaron didn't speak up and say, oh, no, 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 Moses, no. Mm -hmm. No, sir, we, we are not doing this thing. The Lord is. Mm -hmm. Aaron didn't speak up. He mm -hmm. stood right there, acquiesced to that, must we? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe to some degree uh, uh, somebody felt like they were doing it. Mm -hmm. But must we fetch you water out of this rod? Mm -hmm. And then Moses lifted up his rod, mm -hmm. and he did exactly what the Lord said, don't do. Mm -hmm. You remember Adam and Eve? Mm -hmm. They did exactly what the Lord said, don't do. Mm -hmm. God said, speak to the rock. Yes. 
He was an angry man, vexed, annoyed. He smoked the rock. And at that twice, the water came out. God blessed the people. God provided for the people. But God spake unto Moses and Aaron. Yes. Uh, he, he stood idly by. You know, we can't stand idly by and see wrong and don't say nothing and mm -hmm. think we're not a part of it. Yeah. That's what we do in the church. I'm just not going to say nothing. I don't want no problem. Okay, but you're guilty. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you need to speak up if it's principle. If it's for righteousness, sake. You, you need to speak up and say something. Otherwise, you're guilty. You just acquiesce with the wrong, go along with it and act like everything will be all right. Say, oh, well, the Lord will take care of it. Okay, mm -hmm. but you're guilty. And God spake unto Moses and said, because you believed in me not. You didn't do it the way I told you to do it. And you uh, you didn't sanctify me in the eyes of the people. You, 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 you exhibited a wrong character. Jesus. Anger. Revenge. Oh. Uh, you were spiteful. You referred to the people in a very negative way. That's out of anger. Mm -hmm. You were flustered. And fl you didn't sanctify me mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. eyes of the people. Therefore, you're not going to bring the people into the... Promised land. Uh, that seems sort of severe. That's mm. justice. Yes. I yes. hope you hear me. Yes. That's justice. Mm. People seeing that, they might have thought it was all right. Mm -hmm. The leader does it. Oh, yeah. If I do it sometime, well, what is the difference? Mm -hmm. The leader don't go out and pass out no tracks. Why am I going to do it? Mm -hmm. The leader eats this and that, so therefore I should do it. The leader gets up and looks at TV all the time and talk about football and boxing and all that kind of stuff. There's nothing wrong with it. None of it. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, after this serious sentence God passes, Moses goes before the Lord. You know, the, 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 there have been many times when uh, Moses went before the Lord because the Lord was going to destroy the people. And I will make of you a great nation. Lord, Lord, please don't do this thing. And the Lord repented. There were a number of times that uh, Moses went before the Lord in behalf of the people. And things changed. So why wouldn't they change for him? All right? This, this is not such a big thing. He doesn't do it all the time. He's been leading these people for decades in the end. And so let's look and see what happens. Deuteronomy 3, 24 through 26, what does the Bible say? O Lord God, thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness mm -hmm. and thy mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or in earth that can do according to thy works mm -hmm. and according to thy might? Mm -hmm. I pray thee, let me go over yes. and see the good land that is beyond Jordan, yeah. that goodly mountain, yeah. and Lebanon. But the Lord was wroth with me for your sakes and would not hear me. And the Lord said unto me, Let it suffice thee. Speak no more unto me of this matter. Have mercy. Mm -hmm. Justice. That's justice. Mm -hmm. Moses is talking to the Lord. Lord, I pray thee, let me go over. To see the good land. I've been leading these people all this time. I've seen all your great works. Let's, let's don't let it end like this. Please, Lord. Jesus have mercy. But Moses said to the people, the Lord was wroth with me for your sakes. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lord made me an example. You follow me? The Lord... Uh, uh, let justice come down on me so that you would learn a lesson. You would see, no matter who it is, nobody escapes God's justice. Even a Moses, who was highly favored of God. You don't play with God. And Moses said to the people, the Lord would not hear me. And the Lord said unto me, let it suffice. Let it be enough. You just be satisfied. You accept. And then God added, speak no more unto me of this matter. Mm. And, and that was a command. Yes. No need praying about it no more. And I'm telling you, don't say nothing about it no more. Don't pray to me about it anymore. Mm. Mm -mm. Moses obeyed that command. It was a command. Mm. You just be satisfied with what I said. Let that suffice you. I'm doing this for the people's sake more than anything. So don't even talk to me about it anymore. Seems quite severe, doesn't it? And, and, and there's another element that, that, that we have to uh, uh, add to this. Let's look at it in Deuteronomy 32, 14 
48 to 52. And the Lord spake unto Moses that self same day, saying, Get thee up into this mountain, mm. Abiram, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho. And behold, the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession, and die in the mount, mm. whither thou goest up, and be gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor, and was gathered unto his people. Because ye transgressed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribah Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin, because you sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel, yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go thither unto the land which I give the children of Israel. Not only are you not going into the land, God says, but you're going to die in the mount. Mm -hmm. You're going to come up. I'm calling you up. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to die. And you're going to be gathered unto your people. That doesn't imply that you're going to be resurrected almost immediately. It doesn't imply mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. doesn't imply that. It means you're just going to die and rest in the grave with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And he gave the reason, because ye trespassed against me among the children of Israel, and because you sanctified me not. Leaders, be careful that you set the right example for people. Jesus. Represent God aright. Yes. That old attitude and anger and revenge and uh, uh, kicking people to the curb and uh, speaking bad about people and speaking roughly to people. Don't do it. Don't do it. Represent God aright. Sanctify God yes. in the presence of people. Mercy, Lord. Don't trespass publicly. Mm. Don't do it. And God told him, you can look over into the mount, mm. I mean into the promised land from the mount, but you're not going over. Mm. You're not taking the children of Israel over. That's justice. Mm. That seems kind of rough. Poor Moses, that seems kind of rough, doesn't it? Oh, yes, it does. And here's what happened, Deuteronomy 34, 4 through 7. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, mm -hmm. but thou shalt not go over thither. Mm -hmm. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Verse. Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulchre unto this day. And Moses was an hundred and twenty years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. Justice. Moses was a hundred and twenty years old. But his eye wasn't dim. Eyesight just as good as ever when he was young. Mm. Wasn't dim. Mm. Nor his natural strength abated. He was strong as he was when he was a young man. Still strong to get about. Mm. He wasn't sick. Mm. Mm -mm. He wasn't sick. God put him to death. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there. And God, in his mercy, buried him at a place that nobody knows about, lest they come and make an idol out of him. All of that sort of thing. Set up a shrine, shrine there. Here was him. Moses was. The people would be visiting it till this day. So he buried him. Put him to death. Justice. Justice. God help us to realize what kind of God we serve. He's a just God. But he's merciful God. But we can't escape that God is just. All right. Now, I, I, I want to uh, uh, highlight something. The children of Israel knew nothing about the fact that Moses was going to be resurrected and all of that sort of thing. Uh, God said, I'm going to gather you unto your people. He, God didn't even imply he was going to resurrect him. So the only thing they knew and the only thing Moses knew was, okay, he's dead. And that's it. He's dead. Uh, Moses believed in resurrection day somewhere in the, in the future. But he wasn't expecting God to do what he did. And let me just sum it up before we look at him. He didn't enter the earthly promised land. But that was only pointing to the heavenly promised land. That's all the earthly promised land was pointing to. 
There's no real place that 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 is of great great value. It's still on earth, still in this world of sin. Uh, that promised land only pointed to the promised land of heaven and eternity and the earth made new. And what God did was still allow Moses to enter the promised land. But he took him into the heavenly one, the, the real one. Isn't God good? God can be just and merciful and gracious at the same time. You know why? Because he's God. <laughs> and that's his character. We wouldn't know that Moses was resurrected except that the Bible gives us a glimpse that that is a fact. In Jude chapter 1 verse 9, the Bible says, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. At some point in time, Michael, that's Jesus, the archangel, the covering cherub of the Father, one of them, came down himself to get Moses out of the grave. And the devil said, Hold up. <laughs> if, if, if what he did was bad enough, that you had to put him to death here on earth. He doesn't deserve to be resurrected into eternity. That ain't fair. Something wrong here. And he actually disputed with Jesus, the one who created Moses, about the body of Moses. The devil said, it's mine. He sinned. He rebelled against you. That's why you didn't let him go into the promised land. What are you talking about? Come on, get away from here. This is my, my soul. He's got to be with me in destruction. And God didn't argue with him. He just rebuked him. Uh, uh, the, the person who in the Faith Hall of Fame has the biggest slot is Moses. Uh, let's look at it. Just, let's look at it briefly. Moses 11, 23 to 28. Big slot in there. What does it say about Moses, the life of Moses? By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure in Egypt, for he, re he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea, as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do, were drowned. Great things, unparalleled things, by faith, by faith in God, through the faith of Jesus, Moses did. Great things, great things, huh? Was he worthy to die like that? Ah, uh, listen, Moses was resurrected. Jesus came down out of heaven himself, personally. And got him out the grave. <laughs> Have mercy. God was just. But he was merciful and gracious at the same time. He condemned appropriately yet. He overrode that in the end. When Jesus. Was about. To go into the grave. It was heaven that sent Moses. And Elijah to talk to him about it. You know Moses had been through that thing of death and resurrection. Uh, he wanted to go down. God sent him down. The Father sent him down to strengthen the hand of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wonder whether he's alive or not. He came down and talked with Jesus. Let's look at it from the Bible. <laughs> Luke 9, 28 through 31. And it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. Yes. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistening. Yes. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, 
which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. The glorified Moses <laughs> and the glorified Elijah, whom the Bible is making clear was taken into heaven. We know Elijah was, mm -hmm. but we didn't quite know Moses was until this time. <laughs> yes, he was. That's not everybody. That's a, a rarity, but God did it. He did enter the promised land, only it was the ultimate one. It was the heavenly one. And they appeared in glory. They were glorified beings. <laughs> and they spake to Jesus of his decease. They encouraged the hand of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Moses had been through the, the portals of death. Mm -hmm. Elijah represented those who will be translated uh, without tasting death. That's the kingdom. That's the fruit of Jesus' doing. They're going to encourage his hand. You're getting ready to go through mm -hmm. the most horrific event of all times. Mm -hmm. And Moses is the one mm -hmm. who comes to strengthen the hand. He, he had tasted of death. Mm -hmm. He had come down to serve people. He had served a long time. And yes, he did make a mistake. Jesus didn't make any mistake. Mm -hmm. But couldn't he have been forgiven? Or, or does he have to enter the portals of death mm -hmm. not knowing I said, Moses, not knowing that he was going to be uh, resurrected so quickly, it'll be all right, Jesus. <laughs> you, you just press on. You just be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Moses, the father, God the father used Moses. He sent him out of heaven to do that. And then one last thing about Moses. Mm -hmm. Revelations 15, 2 through 5. You know, all who get the victory over the beast and over his image and over the mark are going to sing a song. And the Bible says it's the song of Moses, mm -hmm. the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Somehow it puts Moses first. Help me, Lord. <laughs> what does it say here in uh, Revelation 15, 2 through 5? And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, yes. and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. The temple of the tabernacle of the testimony was opened. That's where God the Father is. Listen. <clears throat> Those who have gotten the victory over the beast and over the image and over the mark of his name and over the number of his name are going to see on, stand on the sea of glass, that transparent gold. And they're going to sing the song, and it mentions Moses, the song of Moses, the servant of God. You know God had to esteem him as a, a gem for absolute certain. It's, why didn't it say the song of the lamb and the song of Moses? The lamb is the greater, but the Bible. The Bible, God says, the song of Moses, the servant of God, <clears throat> and the song of the Lamb. That song of victory, we're going to sing about how we got over. And it was because of the greatness of God's work. God work in spite of us. The God's work for us and in us and through us. Through all our ups and downs, God was faithful and he eventually saved us. And all who are saved, all nations of those who are saved are going to come and worship before him. And when that happens, the temple is going to open. The temple of God, the place where the Father actually dwells, is going to open. And we'll be able to, in actuality, be physically in the very presence of God. In worship, the song of Moses. The servant of God and the song of the Lamb. How they made it over, made it through, and in spite of the, the, the thing, this thing called death. Oh, help us, Lord. Help us to represent you aright. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we, we need to learn these lessons. No matter how great the stress, the pressure, 
the unfairness. Help us to represent you aright. Please, Lord Jesus. Help us to sanctify you in the sight of the people. Lord. Please, Lord. Help us not Jesus. to do amiss. Yes. Because we're angry, frustrated, pressured. And truly, sometimes we are. But, Lord, help us. Jesus, thank you. And, oh, Lord, please. Please. Strengthen us. Thank you. To know that we are more than victorious in Christ Jesus. Help us to strengthen the hands of others when they come to the portals of death. Help us not to fear when we come to that point. Help us to know that even though you're just, and oftentimes you have to punish us and chasten us, also your mercy and grace endures forever. There's resurrection day. There's deliverance time. Lord, you are faithful. Help us to know that and trust you to the very end. And you have promised us the promised land, the heavenly promised land, and we, along with Moses, will all be there, standing on the sea of glass. Help us, Lord. Bless us this, we ask in Jesus' blessed and precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord.